Hey guys, Deathslinder Magic here, and I got a little bit caught up in the pre-release and trying to build some basic deck ideas and a billion other things, especially the no-ban announcement that I completely forgot. It's time for Chapter 4 of the story, which by the way, Chapter 5 was released today, so it's really time for Chapter 4 of the Amon Cat storyline. So, on our last episode of Amon Cat Z... Oh wait, he only does the long Z at the end, he never does it at... whatever... I seriously do not quite actually remember what happened in the last story. I know they were like, we should probably talk to Kefnet. And then they like walked around and proved that the plane was taken over by bullets not created. Not a whole lot else happened. Oh, and Gideon's got some like crush on Mittens, the, the white god, and is trying to do the trials because why not? Honestly, if I pulled up on a boat in like France... Why is it a boat, not airplane? I don't know. And they were holding some kind of, like, cheese-eating tournament. I'd be like, yeah, why not? Because, like, I'm from Wisconsin. That's my thing. So, yeah, I'd jump right in, even if I was there to do something way the hell more important. So I get it, even though it's dumb as hell and I still hate the Gideon card. So the prologue for this story makes no sense, comes out of nowhere. I mean, these are kind of poorly written, in case you haven't uh, caught on yet. It states, spending her days served and waited on by scores of devoted undead is precisely Liliana's idea of paradise, but she can't afford to sit idle on Amon Cat. She came to the plane to find, and kill, another of her demon creditors. Um, what? Nicol Bolas owes her money, is that what they're saying? First of all, not a demon. Planeswalker Dragon, not a demon. Okay, for the record, I don't know that for sure, but from what I've heard, he's just a dragon and just a planeswalker. If he's a dragon demon planeswalker, why not? Let's make him like a genie, too. So I believe what the prologue was referring to is the fact that nobody in the city does any damn work. Uh, they just make the undead do their work. And the whole, like, curse slash maybe feature of the Amon Cat plane is whenever something dies, as long as it, its body isn't utterly destroyed, uh, it comes back. Thus the embalm mechanic. So they make the undead do all their work, and it's considered an honor, I guess. So let's see what happens on this episode. So Liliana's just chilling, hanging out with like some mummies and crap, and they're like feeding her figs and fruit, and you know, you guys saw the picture; it was leaked a while ago. So she's just like straight up chilling, but then she keeps looking over at Nicol Bolas's giant horn monument thing. She's like, "Yeah, I should probably do something about that." Now, I don't know Liliana's backstory, but they're going to try to explain this, so I'm going to try to explain this. Um, two of the demons who held the contracts on her soul were dead. And I believe I heard something about that. It has to do with the markings on her skin. I don't remember. Um, and they were killed in surprise attacks by the deadly power of the Chain Veil, apparently. I really didn't follow the Chain Veil storyline, but it sounds freaking awesome, so I should totally go back and read it. So, Kothoped was one of them, and she, I don't know, tricked him or something, like, said she had it, then she didn't, and then, I don't know, killed him or something, I don't remember. Uh, Grizzlebrand was another fun one, um, but guess what? He's now in, I believe, the, uh, the, the vault, that moon silver vault thing on, on that one plane. Oh yeah, Innistrad, that place. Actually, no, I think he's dead. I think they used moon silver powers to kill him. So then they're talking about Razaketh, which would be the third one. Not sure who that is. Um, but she doesn't think that she can take him by surprise. Because the other two are kind of fooled, basically. Which, you know, if you want to take somebody out, you got to do it by surprise. She ain't, she's not wrong. So somehow she knows he's on the plane, but she doesn't know if he's aware of her presence. So that's kind of weird. This is the first mention I've heard of it, unless it was in the last story. I didn't know she was coming here to kill another demon. How demons can planes walk to other planes, I have no idea. Thanks for filling us right in, wizards. This story is just so great. So they finally go on to explain that Bolus was the one who had brokered Liliana's contracts in the first place. So, yeah. So she thinks he might be a little bit pissed now that she's trying to, like, break them. So she does reveal that, you know, yeah, they want to try to kill, um, uh, uh what's his face? Bolus. <laughs> but, um... First, she wants them to help her kill Razaketh. So this gets weird as hell. Then all of a sudden, some guy named the Raven Man just shows up. He's like a ghost or incorporeal entity or lives in her mind. She doesn't even know. Um, I don't, apparently, he'd just been showing up and like talking to her ever since she was young. Like, kind of weird. 
So he's like, hey, Liliana, don't you have anything better to do? Get off your lazy butt and stop being a slothomancer. But apparently she had just barely passably been doing something. Um, she didn't know how the locals would respond to her, like, controlling undead. Um, so she had incorporeal shadow ghost things go searching for signs of Razaketh for her, because that's easier. Hell, I'd do the same thing. So apparently this raven guy is kind of a dick, because he's like, Oh, instead of making friends with the people from the Gatewatch, you should just manipulate them and continue to trick them into fighting your battles with you to get an edge, or whatever. Oh, and interestingly, if you remember from, I believe, the first episode when she got swallowed by a sandworm, uh, the power of the chain veil, because she had it on her, uh, blasted her out of the worm's belly. So uh, he reveals that he was the one behind that. So apparently he's not just some ghost advisor that follows her around. He can do things. I think we've got like a time traveling Doctor Who kind of thing going on, like with the living weapon where you have to like convince the weapon to work and you can like talk to it and crap, except for the chain veil. Either that or she's bonkers as hell. And then Jace shows up and uh, the Raven guy goes off to hide because he honestly doesn't even know if Jace could see him. And they have the most intelligent conversation ever. Great dialogue, 10 out of 10 in this story. Hello, Jace, she said. Brunch. It's past midday, he said. Mid midday. Is it midday or midday? I don't speak British. It's a late brunch. That's just lunch. Thanks for that insight, Jace. So they get to talking about what the heck made the dead, you know, sandworms just instantly resurrect when Jace didn't sense any other necromancers in the area. And so Liliana says it must have been ambient necromancy. Uh and he's like, is that a thing? And she just shrugs. So she, she just completely made that up. That is so Liliana. So then one of Liliana's ghost scouts is like, hey, yo, I came back because I found something. What's up? So Jace figures out that Liliana is there for a different reason other than just fighting Nicol Bolas. She doesn't feel like telling him exactly. Um, he doesn't figure it out, which is weird because he's a telepath. But I think he doesn't read his fellow Gatewatch members' minds just as a courtesy. So then they come across a bunch of uh, symbols and crap. And they literally call it script and symbols. It's called hiero freaking glyphics. I mean, if you're going to go full Egypt, go full freaking Egypt. Anyway, one of the symbols was Razaketh. So she's, she's like, cool, the shade found the word Razaketh. Awesome. So they go into the um, building that's effectively labeled Razaketh or whatever just to see what's inside. So apparently inside, a bunch of the dead bodies of initiates that died during training or competition or trials or whatever the hell's going on uh, get turned into mummies with a bunch of preservation salts and crap. So some of the people weren't quite done getting wrapped up and they're like getting up and being like, oh my god, I'm a zombie. Um, and so they had to put cartouches on their chest and then that suppressed the necromantic whatever for a while, I guess. So that's neat. If you're wondering what a cartouche is, um, the dictionary definition is super vague, but... I'll just say, I don't know, like a manhole cover, like a sewer cover with like a god's name on it or something. So they looked at a huge mural made out of dark stone on the other side of the big uh, area that they were in, big old room. And um, basically it explained, hey, the final test in the trials or whatever is to go through like the gate that they've heard about when they were there. And fight Razaketh, so good luck with that. According to the mural, it doesn't go very well for most of the initiates. So then Jace is like, wait a minute, you're here to fight Razaketh, aren't you? And so she's like, yeah, well, you know, we kind of killed two of them, and he's next. And then Jace is like, oh my god, you should have told us, we would have helped you. So then the carving of Razaketh on the wall opens its eyes, and then all the mummies stopped working and said, Liliana, all at once. And so they all keep saying her name, and Jace is like, uh, did you make them do that? Because if so, totally freaking hilarious. But she's like, nah, that wasn't me. Good one, though. So they all try and fight her, and Jace uses illusionary ropes to pull them away. I, I don't know how that works. So then she tried to control them because, duh, they're undead mummies, and nope, nothing. And so then it finally clicks for her. Hey, it is literally ambient magic, like necromantic death magic. Um, it's everywhere and anything that dies comes back to life, which I believe the narrator told us about four chapters back. So then she gets a bright idea to try to pull one of the cartouches off the chest of one of the mummies. She does, and it basically just falls apart and burns up in blinding white light. 
I thought she was doing it so that she could control them because the cartouche is what was making them be controlled. I don't know. It wasn't real clear, but then all of a sudden the mummies just like stop and then they part, you know, left and right. And uh, Tebet comes walking through. That's that uh, white blue guy card thing that, I don't know, controls embalming or something. Oh, he's also like the head of at least the district that they're in, if not the whole city. So Temet's like, ha ha, you really are outsiders. Like, literally, you're from somewhere else. Oh, crap, something other than Amonkhet exists. Who knew? And uh, Jace can't really read his mind because he has some kind of protection on it. So he's like, yeah, hey, kind of stall him. Give me a minute. So then he's like, man, I couldn't find any birth records for you guys. I asked Kefnet and all of his viziers. They don't know who the hell you are. Um, and he's like, you know nothing of the horned one. May his return come quickly. May he be found. Blessings and peace be upon him. And so Liliana's like, um, actually, we've met him. Oh, what you gonna do now, big boy? What? And then he's like, silence! Seriously, it just says silence with an exclamation mark. So I just assumed it's like, silence! And then she says, and just so you know, he's a complete at and then gets cut off by mummified hands tightening around her throat. And he goes, lies, and gets super mad. And then his eyes started glowing blue and all the mummy's hands stopped. So I bet you could guess what happened. Oh, and Jace's eyes were glowing too. What a coincidence. So he's like, hey, <laughs> run. So apparently when Jace controlled Temet and Temet's controlling the mummies, that's like exponential and Jace is having a hard time controlling him. So they're like, yeah, we got to get the hell up out of here. And then when they're outside, Jace goes, that was your idea to keep him talking? Blasphemy? And she goes, it was funny. I like Liliana. Like I would date her, man. She's got a funny sense of humor and an attitude, but like she's cool about it. I wonder if she plays Dungeons and Dragons. So then she just dumps more exposition on us because God knows I don't know what the hell's happening. She goes, oh yeah, Razakath? Yeah, he's he's involved with this whole afterlife pyramid scheme thing. <laughs> Super pun intended. Um, and he knows that she's here and the chain veil is the only reason that he can't activate her contract. I still don't know what that means. I assume it was some kind of deal with a bunch of demons to give her extra necromantic powers, but then maybe there was like a time limit or condition on it, and now they want to collect. But like now she's a planeswalker, but I don't know if she was before, and I don't know why she signed the contract in the first place. Please, somebody in the comment section, explain the hell out of this. So then Liliana's like, so you wiped Temet's mind, right? And he was like, no. And then she's like, yeah, great. Oh, this will go well. Oh, I'm so sure we're still welcome here. So now that that cat's out of the bag, she's like, yeah, I probably should go get the other members of the Gatewatch and we should go take down, uh, what's his damn name? See, I can never remember real names. I can only remember dumb nicknames and I haven't made up one for him yet because it's Razakath. I could just say Razzy, but that's that's been done. So that's the end of this particular story, but coming up really soon will be chapter five because it's already posted. I mean, it's it, like it's posted on their website, like not, I haven't recorded it yet. So what's going to happen to the Z Fighters on the next episode of Amon Cat Z? Stay tuned next week, even though it'll be literally in 60 minutes, and find out. I'll see you guys next video. Oh, um, slight little addition here. Episode 5 was scheduled to be posted today. The artwork is live, the everything's live, the title, the description, but when I click read now, it brings me to basically an error page. Awesome. So, I guess you'll have to wait until tomorrow to find out what happens to our favorite Z-Fighters on the next episode of I'm on Kajay.